Why, hello. This is the place to be if you're going on a technical interview and you're looking for some prep. Uh, I'm going to be on Hacker Rank and we're doing the Bomberman game problem. The way this is set up is I'll go over the problem, give you some time to do it yourself, and then we'll go over my solution afterwards. Bomberman lives in a rectangular grid. Each cell in the grid either contains a bomb or nothing at all. Each bomb can be planted in any cell of the grid, but once planted, it will detonate after exactly three seconds. Once a bomb detonates, it's destroyed along with anything in its four neighboring cells. So the way if you typically have a grid, it's like the bomb in the middle and then up, down, left, right. Those are the four cells that it's talking about. If there is a bomb in a neighboring cell, the neighboring bomb is destroyed without detonating, so there is no chain reaction. Bomberman himself is, is immune to bombs, so he can move freely throughout the grid. Here's what he does. First, initially Bomberman arbitrarily plants bombs in some of the cells. This is the initial state. After one second, Bomberman does nothing. After one more second, Bomberman plants bombs in all cells that don't have bombs thus filling the whole grid with bombs. No bombs detonate at this point. After one more second, any bombs planted exactly three seconds ago, and that would be in the initial state, uh, will detonate. Here, Bomberman stands back and observes. Uh, Bomberman then repeats steps three to four basically indefinitely. So here's an example. If we get this uh, input, so notice how like the bottom left, just focus on the bottom left here. So the initial state has four bombs in the bottom left. Uh, and so this is like the initial stage. The first second, Bomberman does nothing. The second second, Bomberman does uh, this thing where he plants bombs in every cell. And so basically you have a, a whole, just a whole grid of, of bombs. But after the third second, all the bombs from the initial phase, which again, look, the four in the bottom right, uh, left, those explode, but they also explode in everything that's to the left and up, left, right, up, down. Um, so that's why we get this formation here. So you'll notice that this this bomb doesn't count because again, it has to be in that like the like plus sign configuration. So that's the idea. Um, I'll let you all have a few moments to check it out yourself. I have the link to the problem in the description, and then we'll come back with my solution. All right, so we're back. Most of the complexity comes in just the, the initial understanding of what's going on and the fact that you definitely don't want to go through, let's see how many um, the constraints here. So n could be up to 10 to the ninth, you know? So we definitely don't want to calculate that. That's excessive. So the trick here is really finding the pattern and then knowing how to be as efficient as possible with that pattern. So here are is an example of a bunch of grids. So I wanna show you like from phase, you know, phases one through whatever it is, um, what's going on. So I'm going to give it a kind of a toy example, but we'll work through it together and we'll see what's going on here. All right. So here is like an initial phase set up here. I, I'm going to be using numbers to refer to how many seconds until the bomb explodes. And we see here that the, we have like uh, one here, one here, one here, and uh, just three bombs right now in the initial phase. So this is basically nothing's really happening. Um, so what happens in the next phase? All right, so we'll see this next phase where Bomberman is just gonna observe, but we see that the bombs tick down at least once. So we have basically the same grid set up and there's still bombs there in the same spots. It's just one second later. All right, now we see something kind of different happening here. We are on the second, the, no, I equals two, the next iteration, Bomberman is planting bombs. So the whole grid is filled, but we can still keep track of the timers and we see that the next iteration will actually have some explosions. Now for this third uh, iteration, we have a situation where Bomberman is just observing, but now the bombs have gone off. So I want to give uh, real attention here to what's going on. What I've done is I've highlighted the bombs from the previous uh, iteration in red here, but effectively what's happening is that anything that's to the left, right, up and bottom are also getting destroyed. So it itself is going to be reset to zero, as in like it's blank or empty, um, but everything um, up and down, left and right. So you'll notice that this two here is referring to this bomb from the previous step, but it hasn't been touched because it doesn't reach diagonally. You'll notice the pattern here is that the Bomberman is going from like 
this planting or initial phase to observing, planting, observing, planting, observing. So every single plant is going to be filled completely. So that's one thing you'll notice that basically if you have an iteration that's even, you can always, you, you know what the result is because it's just going to be a filled in um, grid. Um, so we see here that on the fourth iteration, it's just a planting phase. So this is a full grid, but everything that was um, remaining from the previous um, iteration has moved forward by, or I should say reduced by one tick. So the next iteration, we'll see those ones explode. So we see in the fifth observation, Barman is just sitting back and observing, and the bombs from the previous step are ticking down and exploding. And I've highlighted those in the red circles here. And again, you notice that the you know, top, bottom, left, right are also exploding with those. Uh, for the next iteration, we're just filling in the gaps. Basically, anything that was empty before is being filled in. So this is another grid that's just filled in where Bomberman is just planning everything. Again, for the seventh observation, I'm just showing where the previous bombs were and that they explode again in the same pattern that we're used to. But I will have you recognize that we've seen this exact pattern before. So observation number seven looks exactly like the third observation. So these two are the same. Now you might be questioning, well, maybe that's just because of this one toy example. But in fact, if you try this out, it will repeat itself in this exact same way every single time. And that's one way that we can make this um, algorithm extremely efficient because we don't need to keep doing a whole lot of uh, iterations. We could just do from three to seven and we'll basically get there. So the code is not very difficult. It's really more about um, understanding the pattern that's going on and when I was doing this, I definitely had to like get a pen and paper and like figure this out and like write it out. All right, I wanna go into my solution and there's a lot of functional design going on here. So I definitely did my best to properly abstract some of the logic, which is uh, actually meant to help simpl simplify my life. So the first thing I'll recognize is that when the N is one, we don't need to do anything. The grid is basically already to, you know format the way it's supposed to be. Um, we also re recognize that uh, if we go back here, anytime we're on an even iteration, that's when Bomberman is planting. And we know that when he's planting that there's a full grid, so we don't need to really do anything. So um, when I is divisible by two, then we know that we can just like um, create a full grid. So this function is just what I'm doing up, up top here. It's uh, up here, so I can like show you that. Basically, it's just taking the columns so this these grids are not n by n they are n by m so that's why i have to like specify what the um, max columns are um and one thing i will note too that in the javascript implementation you're being given an n which is the number of iterations and the grid which is actually an array but it's not an array of arrays it's an array of strings um but anyway so what i'm doing here is i am taking the length of every row, which is the number of columns that I'm calling column max. I'm taking the bomb cell, which I'm just declaring as a uh, constant, which is just a capital O, and I'm doing dot repeat, which is a string method, and I'm just repeating that, you know, that many times just so that it's filling um, the entire column width, and then I just do grid dot fill, and that's what I'm returning. So that's what that's doing. Th next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to kind of reformat my this incoming grid. So I have a function here called format grid. All this thing is basically doing, and I'll show the code in a second. But all this is doing, excuse me, is taking the input grid, which is looking basically like this, and I want to convert that into the form that I want, which is going to look like what I have here. So I have zeros representing empty spaces and threes representing a bomb that is at third three seconds until it explodes. I have another helper method here called iterate grid, which will basically move the state of the grid to the next iteration. So this format grid, let's see what that looks like. So this is another like helper function here. It's, it looks like a lot of stuff, but effectively, um, I, I'm going to use this function to format this grid either into the form I'm like I want, which is the nut using the numbers or I can form it back into the original grid, which has just the dots and the capital O's. So here where the format is the out, when I want to make it into the output format, which is again, the original form that the, the expected output for the function, 
what I want to do here is basically I just take everything from my format, which is not zero. So a zero means that it's an empty cell, but a zero, anything that's not zero, this is just a regular expression saying not zero. So everything that's not zero is being replaced by a bombs, and then anything that's zero is replaced by an empty cell. Um, and again, those are defined up here as just like a string. Otherwise, I basically do the exact opposite. I convert bomb cells into the cells I want. And because I, I know I'm using this as an initial, this is like the initialization uh, formatting, I know that I can replace a bomb cell. Again, I'm using regular expression here. And I'm using, I'm going to replace it with the number two, because uh, if we look back here. So this that's this observation here, where the two is referring to the the first time that Bomberman has observed, uh, just to get it in that like correct position. And I'm replacing empty cells with zero. So that's all that formatting thing is doing. All right, so once I have my grid formatted, then I can start iterating on it. And so I have a function here that's just called iterate. And all it's doing is taking the state of the grid into the next phase. And it's just doing, as you would expect, it's just intelligently selecting um, uh, bombs that are two and bring them down to one. Anything that's a zero, it will handle um, replacing those with threes because Bomberman will fill in those empty cells. Um, in the case of the one, that's when it explodes, and so that's a special case that I will have to take into account. What this iterate grid function does is it will handle creating the next state of the grid, and so what I need to do is handle explosions here as well. So that's why I have this empty array called explosions, and I'm just going to store the row and column indices um, in order to keep track of them. I'm effectively going to be using this as a queue to handle the explosions one at a time, but that, that'll be later on. Um, but first, I need to loop through the uh, grid, and so I go first by row, and then I will you have to remember the row is basically a string though so I need to also loop through the string itself and um, properly um, fill in the correct uh, character in there so I will be creating a new row iteratively um, and to do that I go through each character and I'm calling that column basically so the column is the position within the row um, and so I'll grab my character which is grid row column and then I will be filling in the next character in my new row with a new character. By default, I'll just keep it as a previous character though, but I will be overwriting this um, properly. And to do that, I'll have a basic switch statement here. So in the case of zero, then I know that Bomberman, Bomberman will fill that in with a three. Um, otherwise, if there's a one, I know that that's an explosion happening. So I will add my row and column to my explosions list or array. In the case that it's two, I just count down to one. In the case of three, I just count down to two. So that's all that's happening here. Uh, notice for the explosion situation, I'm not, I'm not um, using a new character. I can that'll be by default be the previous character. And again, this is just because it's going to explode, so it doesn't really matter what that is. So here I have the new character being added to the growing string as the new row. And then here, once that loop is done, the grid row is being replaced by that new row. If there are no explosions, then you're basically done. You can just return the grid as is. If there are explosions left in the grid, then we need to intelligently handle those. And so what I've ended up doing here is just creating a for loop and looping through all the explosions. And then I've, again, I've abstracted this, this functionality, the responsibility um, into this explode bomb function, which will take the grid, the row and the column, and then intelligently take the up, down, left, right, and explode those effectively. So let's look at what that looks like. So here's the explode bomb function. Again, it takes a grid, row, and column, and it will just um, replace each um, position with zero because it has exploded. So here I have the max row, because again, it's a, a grid that's n by m, so you can't count on them being the same number. So that's what this row max is and column max is. Um, and what I handle is the center, which needs to explode, up, down, left, right. Of course, you have to take care of the bounce case of the, if you you know subtract one and you're at the zeroth position, then you, you that you can't do anything with that really. So this just basically intelligently handles the the bounce cases of hitting the wall. Um, again, and up, down, left, right. So all that code is there. I don't want to like go into too much detail with it. Um, I will say that there is 
yet another function that I, I've created here because we're, again we're dealing with strings so what I want to do is basically take the string that I currently have which is the, the row and using the index properly replace that position with a zero um, you can't do that if it was an array it would be very easy but because we're dealing with strings I had to like kind of give this functionality here basically all it's doing is it's using string method um, dot slice to slice the left side put in the character which in this case is, is always going to be a zero put in your character and then you slice the other half so that's like the left middle right and it's just returning that as one big string so this is effectively like the new row as if it had been replaced and you're just doing that um, one two three four five times because there are five positions to consider all right, so that's the explode bomb. And then once you do your explode bomb, your grid has now been changed. So all these are changing uh, an array. So it's doing this in place effectively. So uh, you don't see me like reassign grid the, the variable. I don't need to because it's an object that's in memory. So it will um, do, do all these changes in place. So when I return the grid, it's a little unnecessary to do that, but you know, I felt like I wanted to do that properly. Um, so that's what this iterate grid is doing. Uh, that's just the first iteration though. So this will get me, um, as of this line 113, that gets me to this this position here, the i equals 2, because this is the initial phase of 0 and 2, like the i equals 1, and then it goes into the plant position. So what do I do now? So here's the idea. I want to basically reset my count to be on the cycle, you know, because the cycle here is iteration three, four, five, six, and seven. But once you get to seven, you're basically looping back to three. So what we have here is a, 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 a four, four unique uh, situations, three, four, five, and six. Once you get past six, you're back to three. So that's why we kind of need to like reset where we are in the number system. I'm already handling the, the initial uh, one here. So I don't need that one anymore. On top of that, I can kind of skip two two points here. So I can skip one and two and just get right back on three. So by by subtracting two, I'm set. I'm, I'm aligning all the iterations back to this like right the proper the proper scale, and then I can do my modulus four, which will reduce the complexity to just something between one, two, three, or four. So that's all this is doing. So this is just like. Um, I should put this up here. So this is removing the repeat cycles. Um, and then I just iterate, you know, it, I take my n while n at this point, n has been permanently reduced to the simplest number possible. And while n is a number, basically, and not zero, it will go at most O of four. So this is a constant thing. And then it will iterate, Oop, then it will iterate the grid subtract n and just keeps doing that and so by the time you get when you're done with the loop you have iterated to the point that you are currently at that proper iteration and you can just format it back to the original form that it's supposed to be in and then return that grid as your answer now this is what makes it feasible you know the fact that you're reducing the complexity to just a basically constant time the part that's not constant though is the fact that when you iterate on the grid you're actually going through each element. So it's, um, this is not quite right. This is n times n uh, times two, but you don't really care about the times two. So like, this is the most, so each of these steps are um, going through the entire grid once. So, you know, you're doing this one, two, potentially, you know, four times, fifth time. So you might be doing this n times m a bunch of times which may not be the most efficient but the fact that you've reduced the complexity to just like this constant you, you're you're being very efficient with what you have um, so let's run some stuff here let's run some code and sure enough it works on the test case and let's submit some code isn't that beautiful anyway so that is my solution so if this is the kind of thing that you like make sure to like subscribe all the good stuff and I will be seeing you next time